perhaps if it's not conscious, then it's still just a toaster. Um, so I, I think, again, just as before, um, when I said we had to reframe it as a question of what is personality, we had to reframe this question as what is consciousness and how do we define that? And once we can answer that question, then perhaps we, we can answer this question. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's well, machinist. No, that's, that's an interesting thing. Well, what's your Yeah, well, no, I mean, it's interesting. I thought, you know, trying to put this in my slides, but uh, it, it, it does depend on your philosophical head, which might be someone who, you know, it doesn't matter how, how intelligent you think and how much you like you have emotions and things that you feel like you're going to behave. If you are implemented, if your brain is implemented, So the, the book that I referenced there um, does talk about this topic exactly and goes into it, even the, the history of some of the sex machines that our, our race has produced. Um, and it talks about vibrators and it talks about all sorts of other machinery that we've used for, for sex. Um, and what, what is the line then? Um, and so my answer to that is basically what I was talking about where when you start to develop a relationship with that machine, then it's you, you start to cross the line. And w when you have an emotional bond with it, then you're talking about something completely different. And I, if you have an emotional bond with your vibrator, then maybe that is close to having sex with a robot. Um, but I think that's gonna be more likely to have that kind of relationship as the machine or as the robot uh, gets more capabilities. Um, I don't think it's necessarily going to be require that it be more human-like, I think it's going to be more that it has more capabilities and, and improved behavior. Yeah, I think it, I mean, this just goes to the question of what, where, what's your definition of what, you know, what does it mean to be a human or anything like that? It might just be that you are in that particular domain. I'm not, I'm not aware of any <laughs> stringent uh, definition of that. It's perhaps it's someone should make So I'm clear on your question. Um, you're asking that as we develop uh, ethics for interacting and treating animals, is that kind of a precursor for um, the ethics that we develop for with machines or with artificial intelligence and with robots?
so my perspective on this uh, question um, reflects my research. So I, I do research in emotions. Um, and so I see with animals that are more developed, they also tend to portray um, significantly more emotions and sometimes more human-like emotions, more advanced emotions, uh, sometimes more social emotions. And a lot of times our ethics are guided by those emotions where we don't want to cause the, um, the animal pain or suffering or trauma. And so I think that will carry over into artificial intelligence, into robotics. If the machine can feel that pain, if that machine can suffer, then we might be bringing some of those same ethical guidelines to the machine. I'm happy to take, start with this. Um, I, I'm chuckling a little bit because um, this is somewhat related to a topic I, I'm currently working on. Um, and it, it's basically, how, how does a robot make a moral decision? How does a, a robot make an ethical decision? Um, and what are the influences upon that decision? And we like to think that humans make a completely rational decision um, even in these moral cases, but there are plenty of examples where people do not, and where the, the utilitarian or the rational